One of the most important aspects to any Assassin's Creed story is its side characters, and there have been a lot through the years, ranging from fantastic to forgettable and absolutely terrible. From the moment AC2 opens, hell, even AC1, the idea of brotherhood has been a central theme to nearly every single story that's been told in the series. So today, let's look at the best side characters the series has to offer. Before we do get into the video, it would really be appreciated if you could hit like, and if you're new here, make sure to subscribe with post notifications turned on. And with all that being said, here are the top 5 Assassin's Creed side characters. At number 5, we have Yusuf from Assassin's Creed Revelations, who kind of acted as a reflection of a younger Ezio, for old man Ezio in that game, trying his hardest to build and lead the Brotherhood in Constantinople, and continue the fight against the Templars. By the time Ezio reaches Constantinople, the Assassins nearly have complete control of the city, and that is largely thanks to the charismatic and cunning abilities of Yusuf. And as he shows his mentor around, it's clear that Yusuf has a true grasp on what it is to be an assassin, and honestly, what it is to be a good human being. Revelations is a game all about character reflections. Prince Suleiman is a reflection of Ezio when he was a young man in Assassin's Creed 2, and Yusuf truly is the embodiment of the best version of Ezio from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, a version of Ezio that is even better than the Italian himself. And so when Yusuf is tragically killed, we feel a true, genuine connection to the man, as in his death, we see the death of the protagonist that we've been playing for for three years, and for nearly four decades worth of in-game time. And that death is the final motivator for Ezio to take his true final form, and combine his newfound wisdom with the skills he's gained and that rage and vengeance that we've seen inside of him since he was 17 years old. Ah, 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 don't touch that. One wrong move and bang, the building comes down. Are you serious? <laughs> Look on your face. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. At number 4 we have Sigurd, the brother of Eivor of Arryn's daughter, a character who in the earliest moments of Assassin's Creed Valhalla saves our protagonist from imminent death, and acts throughout the game as a constant presence. Sigurd has a vitally important part to play in the plot of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but on top of that, his relationship with Eivor is pure. Nothing about the respect and love they have for one another is manufactured, and we see that for just about the first 10-20 to 20 hours of the game, which makes it even more heartbreaking as Sigurd is traumatised and manipulated by Bath him into disconnecting with his sister, falling into a manic state as he becomes aware with his relations to his own gods, and developing a god complex that can only be cured by the love of Eivor, which has been the only true consistent throughout his entire life. In all honesty, you cannot have the story of Assassin's Creed Valhalla without Sigurd, you cannot have one of these characters without the other. And if there was ever an AC game that truly hammered home that theme of brotherhood, Assassin's Creed Valhalla would be it. <laughs> At number 3, we have Uncle Mario, who is introduced in the most comical fashion of all time. Don't you recognize me? It's a me, Mario! However, Ezio's first true mentor figure, aside from Paola, acts as a father figure for the boy that lost his father, that lost his entire family. He is the only male connection to the Editori family that Ezio has left, and so he immediately becomes the most important male figure in Ezio's life, as this boy continues to develop, grow, and learn without anyone else to truly guide him. Mario is fiercely loyal, both to his family and to his creed and he truly believes in the purpose of the assassins. And although Ezio goes on to gain a more nuanced perspective on the Order, if it weren't for Mario's fierce dedication, then Ezio never would have went on his journey in the first place. As Ezio builds his new family, his adopted family in Assassin's Creed 2, we see him and Mario just simply get even closer, until Ezio's grown into a fully fledged man, and Mario can step back proud of the boy that he raised which makes his death at the start of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood that much more heartbreaking. Mario may have been introduced as a reference to a 1980s Nintendo product, but he stands as one of the most iconic figures in Assassin's Creed history. Uncle! <laughs> Don't worry, Nipote. You are not alone. At number 4 we have Mary Reed, a double-sided character who at first seems fairly minimal in the story of Assassin's Creed 4, however goes on to become Edward's strongest ally. Mary, who took on the alias of James Kidd, the son of the iconic pirate William Kidd, begins as a very closed-off character. 
appearing as a fairly one-dimensional pirate archetype. But as Mary slowly uncovers the truth to Edward about who she really is, not only as a person but also as a member of the Assassin Order, she builds a level of trust with Edward that he isn't used to. A level of trust that isn't common amongst pirates. And so, whilst Edward is forced to fight against his former brothers, he continues to stand at Mary's side, even after he rejects her offer to become an assassin. The conversations that these two have about the creed and about the entire concept of freedom are vitally important to Assassin's Creed Black Flag's story. Mary, for all intents and purposes, makes Black Flag an Assassin's Creed game. And once again, her death is absolutely heartbreaking. It acts as the turning point for Edward to truly understand where his life is going. It is a beautifully tragic moment to cap off a truly fantastic character. And as Edward and Anne Bonny take on Mary's legacy, the two both change for the better, which is the most important thing an Assassin's Creed side character can do. I'll be with you, can we? I will. And last but not least, at number one, we have Leonardo da Vinci, Ezio de Torre's best friend. A man who is entirely disconnected from violence, from conflict. A man that is disconnected from the Assassin Templar conflict. A man who stands by Ezio's cause and acts as a truly loyal friend throughout. Ezio and Leonardo's friendship is built gradually, with the two meeting each other as complete strangers and constantly coincidentally bumping into each other until they eventually become strong friends. And although there's a massive level of respect between the two, Leonardo kind of also represents what Ezio is fighting for. Leonardo is the living embodiment of the incredible feats that human beings can achieve when they are given freedom. Given the freedom to create, given the freedom to build, given the freedom to live as they will. He has no interest in revenge, he has no interest in fighting. He simply wants to live and embrace the life that he is so passionate about. A passion that radiates from him in every single scene he's in. And so Leonardo also acts as an extra layer of motivation for both Ezio and the player. A motivation that is pure of heart. A motivation that truly makes the player and Ezio understand why what they are doing is right. Leonardo is a fantastic character and thankfully we get to spend so much time with him across Assassin's Creed 2 and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. And to me, he is by far the best Assassin's Creed side character of all time. Isn't it? Care to come in? It may be later. I need to visit the Palazzo della Seta. Try and gain an audience with Emilio. As you wish. But should you find yourself with free time, or another Codex page, don't hesitate to visit. My door is always open. Grazie, my friend. Di nulla. But of course, as always, that is just my opinion, and I'm sure plenty of people will agree and disagree with me, so if you do, let me know why in the comments down below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit like, and if you're new here and want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe with post notifications turned on. Follow me on Twitter for more video updates, and please do let me know in the comments what you think of the recent upload style. We've been uploading different kinds of videos, but I hope you've enjoyed the higher output of content. With all that being said, I've been Joe, aka Founder Scarab, and I will see you all in the next one.